the first quarter of 2020 will certainly go down in history and not for the heavy rains and floods that engulf the country, but for a nation under curfew. All over Kenya, people are coping with the fundamental change to their daily lives. Adapting to difficult times is now the new norm. We have been reporting around the country on how the government is dealing with the challenges COVID-19 has brought forth. But tonight, we look at how individuals are handling the situation. Here is curfew economy with our very own Enoch Sekolia. On an ordinary day, this place is usually loud. Clubs and restaurants, shops, but they're all closed. There is no life here. Nairobi's nightlife is dead, simply dead owing to the coronavirus pandemic. Ronald Gala Street in the heart of Kenya's capital. Edges of the street usually provide parking and stages for buses and matatus that end up in the city's estates like Gidurai and Mwiki. Evening hours are usually chaotic, but not anymore. Cracking sound of night insects dominating the airwaves, vacated by the loud music from nightclubs and noise from matatus. The streets of Nairobi literally have new kings. What used to be normal doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> Nairobi has been placed on red alert. It's Kenya's epicenter for COVID-19. Community transmission in the Kenyan capital is on the rise. Like all parts of the country, Nairobi was placed under curfew and people are restricted from moving into and out of the capital city and its environs. People are supposed to remain indoors once 7 p.m. clocks. It's 28 minutes past 5 p.m. on a Thursday evening, and the hour hand is signaling the approach of curfew time. The race against time is literally on. The town is slowly being deserted. Everyone, as it looks, is rushing to go home. This is the new norm. From those on foot and motorbikes, to those in private and public vehicles, the aim is to reach home before the sun settles in the west. Almost every estate in the capital has a positive coronavirus case. <laughs> Kenya is in the midst of a global outbreak. There is no cure nor vaccine, and so there is panic. The virus is continuing to drag many into hospitals. And should the trend continue, the fear is hospitals might get overwhelmed. A night curfew literally cuts off the nightlife. And with it, activities like partying and clubbing that might fuel the spread of the wild killer disease. 30 minutes to curfew time and the streets are becoming empty. Every second that ticks, a bus or a motorist is leaving town. And they can see police, many of them, are now coming into the city to enforce the curfew. Remember, it's seven to six curfew. As the government seeks proper ways of curtailing the spread 
of the coronavirus pandemic. For those still holed up in the CBD, time is running fast. Darkness is slowly gripping in. The rush to catch the last matatu or bus is apparent. And as the hour hand moves closer to 7 p.m., options become limited. Some opt for motorbikes and swiftly leave the city. No one wants trouble with the law here. By this time, police officers are slowly taking over the streets. And those on foot are forced to energize their strides. Officers are busy clearing the streets. A cat and mouse game, Stephen Nyandigisi, a security guard, has been witnessing a tomboy street since the cafe began. Starts. Sasa huwa tu. Askari ya kipapiga wanasema askari wapaya. Saisa ambiri. Uwana fanya nini hapa? Wanakuja hapa muda siyo mulefu. Utawaona tu hapa. Sivira maskari wamepita hivi sasa wamekimbia. Na wanarudi hapa tera sayi. Mimi naituwa Mildred Anyango. Na nilikuwa ni meandaisili kufanya kazi. Na wakatu wangu kutoka huko. Ni saa kumina ambili. Kini uchi mananichelewa. Haka fika saa kumina ambili na nusu. Nipojaribu kukimbia, kutembea, nika fika saa moja wakati watu wa ruzi kutembea. Ndiyo nikaona wacha nikaya hapa. Watoto wangu wana nitegemea kwa sababu sahi hawako kwa mkono ya mwalimu. Sasa kwa sababu leo hawako niona, angalia hata ni mpiga simu wa ambiwe maliniko na kwa sababu gani. Lakini hata hawata rijika kwa sababu maitaji enye nge wapelekea. Only essential workers are given every way by men and women in blue. Now this is Tom Boy Street. We are passing the Kenya National Archives and the street is deserted just like many other streets in the city. They are empty. The only thing we are seeing perhaps as security guards who are manning various buildings in the city to just make sure that Everything is secure. Mimi kwa machine yangu naita Ronald Nyasinga. Usiri tu naona kutoka huko mwisho mpaka huko kule huko. Eh? Kitambo hii tao ni matatu taxi siliko hapa sina chapa mpaka asubuhi. Na hata hizi magari za kuenda masafa marefu ni 24 hours. Hapa kulikuwa kama kuna kaa kama mchana hakuna mchana hakuna usiku. Magari tu unaona tu. Lakini round hii Nyasinga <laughs> Nyasinga and Nyandigisi reveal just how COVID-19 have affected the security sector. 
President Uhuru Kenyatta recently extended Kenya's curfew and for the slightly more than two weeks to come, the quiet and dim nightlife is expected to engulf the city. Indeed, the silent night has frozen income for many city dwellers. Those in the tourism and hospitality industry, some in the transport sector, like night taxi drivers, those who work in bars and clubs, and many others are facing hard economic times. But just how are they surviving? Who is paying their bills? A good question, right? Not every one of them has an answer to the difficult times the world is facing, but some are adapting to remain afloat even as the tide continues to sweep across the landscape. It is 5 a.m. when we set off for Uiru. Our mission in the neighboring town is to meet Peter Ndegwa, a former taxi driver who has had to adapt and adjust his source of livelihood. We arrive at the market at around 6.30 a.m. Then this taxi car pulls off and Peter is leaving for the market. Kama <laughs> Kuatukuwa <laughs> Sasa uwa na olede ni kuna zira heli ya uwa na chukua hizo vitu. Sasa naangalia kama zimeigia. Although kuna, kuna hizo mashida pia unapata sabu ya mvua. Zigina zijaigia. Uh, mahali unapata unapata igina iko bei iko juu. Once he has goods, Peter Ndegwa, together with his wife, drive to Kimbo Shopping Center a few kilometers from Ruiru. Tukubali kuna mabadiriko. Nona, na... Na kila hali, kila upande umeumia. So, hapa ni mtu, aweze kujua sasa kwa hii hali huko, unaweza jitoa na mga gani. Hii sasa imekua ni kama shuguli ya, ya sisi wabi, ya mama na mimi. E, sasa juhufa, tukifika pale, tuweze kuchukua hizi vitu kwa haraka. Nona. Na pia hapa, kuna kazi pia, ya kupanga na pia kuhudumia sasa watu. So ni kazi pia na juu hata ye pia kazi yake yenye ilikuwa nafanya pia nayo ilikoma. Hapa hapa kuna sanitizer. Pia kuna sanitizer ya kunini ya kushika pale. Kuna ingine ilikuwa na kwa mfuko, iko na maji. Na pia tuna hope kuna watu wanakuja kama oredo wa medicine na wa wako na sanitizer zao. Na juu oredo sasa hii ngoji watu wameanza kuelewa kuka. Now, 
Indeed, the viral disease has impacted lots of lives. Experts insist that the best medicine is containing the contagion. That is, preventing it from striking even harder. Dr. Jeremy Gitao has been working in the isolation ward since the virus landed in Kenya. He says the battle must be won on the streets or else hospitals on the Kenyan landscape could be overrun. Stay home. If you have to leave your home, you have to wear a mask and you have to maintain the social distancing. With COVID-19 continuing to have a negative impact on the world economy, some Kenyans have decided to adapt. They have changed what they do to remain afloat. At Gidurai 45 Market in Kiambu County, we meet Alice Mwada. Before COVID-19 changed things, Alice used to hawk sausages, samosa, and other foodstuffs at night. But now she has turned to selling onions. Enoxicolia, Citizen TV, Nairobi.